Hello world, my name is Sean and I am with Brandon Mill Glass and this is my first tutorial video on how to take uh, glass items that you would normally throw in the trash um, wine bottles. I don't even remember what this was, I think it had um, Worcestershire sauce in it, Tabasco bottles, 57 bottles, steak sauce, um, stuff you would normally throw away. I can show you how to make into a, a pretty cool uh, piece of art or something useful in your house. Um, today the first thing I'm going to show you guys is how to make one of these. This is in fact a glass chain. Um, this was only two bottles. One of them was a, well you can see the diameter of the bottle, um, in a 57 bottle. Every other length that's what that is. Um, it also now has a sea glass finish on it. Um, so there is no rough edges on it. That was easily obtained, um, and I'll show you how I did that too. So, but first, let's take all these bottles um, in the house, and we're gonna soak them in a five-gallon bucket for several hours to get the labels off. Back all right, so the bottles are um, been soaking probably for about six hours. Um, these 57 bottles, these are really easy to clean up. Uh, the label actually just fell off of that one, and it's on the bottom there. Um, good idea to fill these up before you try and put them in the bucket. It just makes it easier if they just sink versus trying to hold them down one by one. Okay, hey, we've got all of our bottles cleaned up and um, we've got the fence set on the saw. Um, what I'm using here is a, it's a tile saw. It's the cheapest one I can find. Um, you can probably get one of these on Craigslist for about $25 or $30, which is cheaper than what you're going to spend on blades. Um, these things uh, for a decent one, it's going to cost you about $35. Um, I don't know how many bottles you can cut with it because I've cut at least 60 or 70 um, with this particular blade and uh, it's it still doesn't seem to be losing any sharpness. Um, one of the keys to making the blade last the longest, let the blade do the work. Don't ever force the glass through the blade. If you do that, this thing is going to get hot even though the bottom half is sitting in a reservoir. Um, under here if I can get it of water. Um, if it gets too hot the material that bonds the industrial uh, grade diamonds to the metal it will disintegrate and then your blade is shot. Um, you must wear gloves doing this. Uh, Walmart, 8 bucks. Um, they're thick and uh, every now and then a bottle does explode on the saw or the blade will catch it and if you're holding a piece of glass that already has one side cut, it could very easily uh, tear your hands open. Even more importantly, safety glasses. If you don't wear these, you're going to go blind. This thing throws little shards of glass everywhere at a very high speed, and I'm not kidding when I say you will go blind. If you don't wear safety glasses, you are going to screw yourself up. So, without further ado, let's get uh, plugged in here, and we'll start cutting up some bottles. These pieces on the bottom that I'm cutting off, um, they're going to get rock tumbled as well. Um, and they actually turn into big, cool looking pieces of sea glass that can be uh, woven into hemp jewelry. The slower the cut, the less of the, of the, uh, the chips you're going to get on the edges. Sweet. Now the reason I pull it all the way through, even though I'm not cutting anything, I'm still keeping the, the entire face on this flat so that when this goes against the fence again for the next cut, you're not getting pieces that are crooked. This is the rock tumbler that I'm going to use to get the um, sea glass finish on all of our newly cut pieces. Uh, basically a rock tumbler is a timer with a heavy duty plastic barrel on it and you put your glass inside of this with a mixture of water and different um, grades of sand. Basically what these do is um, 
the first grinding will basically just wear down most of the sharp edges. The fine grinding will get it down to about this sea glass consistency. And then if you wanted to bring it back to its original uh, see-through shine, then you'd use a polishing uh, type powder. I haven't used any of these. I simply went to Goodwill and I saw this cool bottle and saw there was sand in it, which is a very fine grain sand. And I've just been using this stuff and this sea glass finishes seems to be what comes out of it. And it's pretty cool and I'm happy with it. So I'm gonna stick with it. So we're gonna put this in our mix. I've already got water in there and uh, some of the sand from the last uh, tumble that I did. And we're gonna set this for about two days come back and check it out. Make sure that you've got your tumbler if you are going to buy one of these. They're not cheap. They're about $40 for a new one. I haven't found any on Craigslist. Um, but if you don't put some kind of fabric underneath it to absorb the vibrations, you're going to hear this thing all through your house. And like I said, you know, this thing has to run for several days. It's not like you can just turn it on for 20, 30 minutes and then be done with it. So I will get this set up and then I'll show you uh, the process of starting it. All mixed in there, the glass parts are in there, and we have it set for two days. We'll come back and check it out when it stops. Okay, so now I've got all the sand off of these out of the tumbler, and um, the finish came out pretty cool. They're perfectly smooth, and uh, they have a sea glass finish to them, um, except the very middles of them. But that's okay because they look pretty cool. Um, this is one 57 steak sauce bottle. Um, now what we're going to do is take these back out to the saw. And these are a little thicker glass than this is. So we're going to cut a little slit in each one of these. And we're going to link these up together and uh, see what that looks like. I am outside now and I've got the little blue rings. And we're going to cut little slits in them. And that's so that we can link all this together. Um, Again, I cannot emphasize the importance of wearing these things. So let me flip this around here. Okay. And wearing gloves. <laughs> and holding an iPhone while trying to cut glass. Slip cut in there, each side of the blade very gently. You can use it to widen it, the gap a little bit. That's about what you want right there. Cut one more just in case you couldn't see it all that great. Nothing exploded and I didn't get cut. That's the finished product. I don't think I need to show anybody how to link chain together. Anybody can do that. This thing is pretty cool. Looks pretty neat. Hi, one more thing I forgot to tell you. When you're done cutting glass, make sure you take a shower with one of these things because you're going to have little pieces of glass stuck in your arms or any part of your body that was exposed with direct line of sight with the saw blade. And if you're not wearing a great big mask, like a, one of those uh, plastic shields and a big rubber apron, you're gonna have the shit in your, uh, in, in your skin. Gently wipe it off and then the, uh, the big scrubby thing, throw it away because you're gonna have uh, glass in that too. They're only like 75 cents, don't be cheap. Okay, see you guys.